to be on this show. All right. <laughs> <laughs> a white one. I can't believe that we're here. <laughs> hey, hi, guys. What a surprise. Hello. What a surprise Hello. all of you were available. I thought I would just be playing, uh, you know, video clips of Lenny Bro. Yeah. And to get three of you who knew Lenny in most different and interesting ways. <laughs> yes, yes, um, yes. And so we can, uh, before we, we play some clips, uh, John had a great idea of, you know, just... Um, saying a little bit about who was this guy, Lenny Bro. Some of us, don't, you know, hadn't heard of Lenny. Yeah. Well, you know, I had the records, the first ones that came out, and I moved to Nashville, and we were house-sitting for a Vanderbilt professor, and Chet calls me up and says, Lenny Bro is in town. Get down here to the office. So he didn't have a place to stay, so he stayed at the spare bedroom at the Vanderbilt professor's house that we were house-sitting for a couple of weeks, I guess, until we found a place for him up near Music Row. So we would we did lots of little incidental things. And I tell you, as much as anything else, what a sweetheart, you know. My kids loved him. They were like three and ten. Because uh, Lenny had a very childlike way of thinking about things anyhow. But his sense of humor and their sense of humor, uh, we all just loved him. You know, it was great to have him around. Of course, there was some guitar stuff going on, too. <laughs> some guitar <laughs> we'll stuff. We'll fill that in as we go here. You know? <laughs> well, John Knowles, you were my first friend in Nashville. That's right, yeah. Yeah, that's right. And, uh, you know, I can just hear you and Lenny, with both of you with uh, really unique senses of humor <laughs> going back and forth, <laughs> you know? I tell you, well, I will tell you one funny story. This was at that place we were house-sitting. It was in the woods. And one morning we walked out to go down to Music Row and on our way to the car there was a rabbit. And this rabbit ran across and stopped and it's like a rabbit will freeze, you know. And as he did it, Lenny froze like that, you know. And the two of them stared at each other what felt like an eternity. And finally Lenny went, and the, and the rabbit ran off, you know, and he gave that little laugh, hey, you know, that's what he would do. You know? Oh, yeah, yeah, great yeah. laugh. <laughs> you could talk about that. And the thing that was funny is maybe three years later he and I were out walking somewhere and he turned to me and said, you remember that rabbit? And I did. It was, but his, he kind of lived in all time, not just any one time, you know. <laughs> yeah. And to have Lenny's brother here, Denny Bro, uh, so Lenny and Denny, so uh, you guys. Yeah, you know, you know I, I apologize for that, but I just wasn't comfortable with Dennis. Uh, I don't know why my mom called me Dennis, but whatever, anyway. Yeah. So it became Denny and Lenny, and... and uh, being Lenny's brother was is still uh, a trip, to say the least. You know, uh, as John mentioned, Lenny had a great sense of humor, and he had us laughing all the time. My mom and I, we just loved him dearly, and I just wish I'd have paid more attention to what he was playing for me at the time. Uh, in meaning, I wish I'd have sat down and recorded it because he did the most beautiful Bill Evans type tunes and and whatever and it was so foreign to what i was doing at the time uh, but i just thought you know he's my brother he's always going to be around you know and just didn't realize that soon he'd be gone you know okay. and uh but as brothers uh geez we had a great time we instantly connected uh back when uh, we were really young when i was a young boy five six years old and we were living in winnipeg manitoba and mom and dad were on the road and lenny was playing in my dad's band and that's about the time they got divorced and we came back to Maine and Lenny stayed in Canada to play with my dad and he never came home until I was I think 14 or 15 so I hadn't seen him in all that time mm -hmm. and he had sent one tape home of him playing guitar that uh, my mom would play and that's what got me whoa who is this guy you know because you know here I was puff the magic dragon you know and not that that's a bad thing but that's what I was doing you know and he comes home and goes hey you know that you know and I went oh man that's what I want to do and he he taught me how to chat pick that was a he said you're going to learn freight train first because the melody is on the bass notes and it makes it easy to play you know and he was just so patient with me and and he taught me these cool little licks that I still use today, you know. And uh, anyway, what a treat to have as a brother. Let's put it that way. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Yes. And yeah. Uh, Kirk, you were the one who built that uh, seventh string guitar that he played uh, out in California. Uh -huh. and that's where you're uh -huh. logging in from right now. Yeah. I have it right is, there. 
I was going to oh, say, is that no the one kidding. in the back? Awesome, yeah. man. It's, I, wow. I searched for 25 years for that after Lenny's uh, funeral and, and uh, Jewel had, and they'd all gone back up to stock, Stockton. And like I thought, she had pawned it. And um, oh. almost 30 years later, the Heritage, Heritage Auction Place house in Dallas found it at a pawn shop in Stockton. And called me and said, "This looks like the guitar that you've been looking for. It's got your name on it." And I said, "That's it. I want it." So um, I wound up getting it. On the, I went to online to the auction, and I, and I was so fortunate to get it back. I really wanted it. <clears throat> I had a I had a different relationship with Lenny than a lot of people. Who was it was about playing guitar, but it was my relationship with Lenny was a lot about the guitar. The, the the physical part of the guitar we were always trying to fix this or fix that or how can we get this that minor second interval without w without using a harmonic and um you know he was he, he was very interesting he was very smart about guitar um you know he knew how they should be set up he knew what was possible um and he it was brilliant what he came up with was the, with this seven string guitar, most people think of a seven string guitar like George Van Epps or Bucky Pizzarelli or, or all those other guys. He, he was way ahead of them. They put the seventh string on the bottom. Lenny put the seventh string on top. So he wanted to expand the range of the guitar, but he didn't seem he didn't see it worthy to expand it on the bass side because you know it's not as versatile. You don't use it that much. Basically, you can play, you can play and sound like you've got a bass player. You know that's kind of what what the seven string guys were doing. Um, <clears throat> but Lenny wanted it on top. Well, that, ex that that extended the range of the guitar uh, a whole another five frets without going anywhere up upward. It was it was more it was more vertical than horizontal. So he, with an A on top, he could like. Uh, like 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 play a. <laughs> uh, <laughs> a good impression of Lenny. Look like yeah. Look like yeah. Yeah, but he could oh, he could play. Um, you know, basically he had he had three octaves at his in his in one position, as we're on a regular guitar. You've got just a little over two octaves, so. Um, and it's the only way I could play it was if I just remembered that whatever you play on the fifth string A, you can play on the first string A. So, you, you know, it made that a little bit easier. He was really innovative, too. Uh, didn't he play a lot of Baroque and Renaissance music with the tune of the third string down to an F sharp? That's right. Yeah. yeah. So he was really used to that wow. and used to the patterns and, you know, he was, he was really, which is basically what this guitar is, is it's like a guitar tune with the third string down to an F sharp. I'm, I'm yeah. sorry. The, the uh, Yeah. The third string. Yeah. Down to an F -sharp. Right. Well, let's, I'll look up some footage you know of what? him playing well, that. So I was going to say one, yeah. one, yeah, one quick one, thing. He, started, he, he was with the Stella by Starlight. That was this guitar. Yeah. I'm sorry, Danny. One quick thing, he he told me that the reason he did that, put that high A string up there, was so that he could play higher melody notes and still have rich lower chords. He didn't have to bring, he, he, he didn't have to invert the chords up high on the neck. He could leave it down nice and low and still get a high melody. Out and, of one uh, position, he he, uh, he he you know to to get the intervals and the and the, the notes that he could get out of just staying in one position, a, a six string guitar player could not do that because they'd have to go all the way up another five frets and still exactly that. it's impossible. But no, yeah. it's before right we play that, uh, I'm going to play a little bit of, of him playing with Chet Atkins from a, an interview that they did. This is a little earlier. This is pre seven string guitar. Let's let's hear a little bit of Lenny. And let us find out who taught whom how That's to play. Right. Well, I'll tell you, the happiest moments of my life are spent with this guy. I can hear him play three minutes, and he puts me on a high like nothing else. Beautiful player. So, we'll play Chad, we let us wit witness, let us take <coughs> benefit right. out of Thank these you. happiest moments. <laughs> <laughs> All right.
gosh. Well, <clears throat> that was something, huh? Yeah. Oh, boy, oh, boy. With a swimming pool shaped like a guitar. Did you see that? <laughs> Yeah. You see that? Oh, Chet, yeah, that, that made me amplifier. laugh so hard when I heard that. Yeah. <laughs> Shaped no, like an amplifier, that. so I'm doing pretty well. <laughs> well, and I tell you, you know, we have those, a few videos, and then that album of them together, but it was always fun just to watch them around the office. Uh, oh, yeah. And then another thing Chet would do a lot is he'd say, Lenny, play me some music. I need to make some phone calls. And then yeah. Lenny, would, Lenny would do something interesting, and Chet would say, excuse me, just a moment, and, and put somebody on the hold. <laughs> he'd say, do that again. <laughs> Uh, I think we all kind of do that, right? Yeah, that's right. I know I do. How do you do that? Yeah. Anyway, wow, that was interesting. I love that. Yeah. Yeah, he was a funny guy too. Yeah, it was something. He had great sense of humor. Man. He uh, he always used to say to me, I'll, uh, you know, and I still spread it around. He always used to say, you know what, Denny? There's one thing, and that's for sure. <laughs> 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 Go figure, you know, I never knew what he meant, but that's what he, he used did. to say. So. He did, yeah. That's great. He had, yeah, he was awesome. Well, you know, I started coming to Nashville um, <clears throat> just after Lenny passed. And uh, so, and, but I, I heard stories like from Chet. Chet uh, told me that when he brought him to uh, get an apartment, that uh, he said, no, what, whatever you do, don't, don't let the lady know that you're a musician. Is you? Uh, she doesn't like to rent a musician. And he said, "Don't worry." And he knocked on the door and he went. <laughs> <laughs> Who else other than a musician would knock? How did he blow his cover? You know? yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah, he was a he was funny boy. We used to have so much fun when he'd come come home. It was always so good to see him and. It, it was uh, a centerpiece for the whole family to get together. And we had a oh, huge sure. family. Yeah. Uh, you know, my mom, she had uh, five sisters and six brothers or the other way around. And uh, all the kids and we'd all get together at my grandmother's house and listen to Lenny play. And they'd all say, Lenny, play Sandman. Lenny, play See You In My Dreams. <laughs> Lenny, play. And he didn't want to play any of those. He wanted to do what he wanted to do, you know. But yeah. he, uh, he, you know, that was like old ancient history stuff to him, and he wanted to he show us what he was scene. really doing, you know. And uh, the family good. just wasn't ready for that, <laughs> to say the least. But well, you know, some of what he was doing was so sophisticated that I, I have trouble following it. He's just going, "Whoa!" It's it's just <laughs> off further than people had gone before, you know. Oh yeah, yeah. But somebody I, sits in humor. I'll tell you. What. We were at the, uh, the NAMM show one time, and we were coming back to your place, Kirk, and uh -huh. one of your guys was driving three of us. And so I was in the front seat, and Lenny was in the back seat with somebody else, and nobody's saying anything because nobody knows what to say to Lenny Bro, you know. Uh, and so I, I just leaned over the back seat, and I said, you know, Lenny, I said, uh, when I was a little bitty baby, my mama used to rock me in the cradle. And Lenny said, in the cotton fields back home? Yeah. <laughs> and I said, yeah. And, he, and we went through the whole lyric like it was a conversation. You know, and the guy just keeps on driving. You know? <laughs> but I kind of just knew I could get him. I knew I could hook him if I did that. You know? <laughs> There's another story I heard about Lenny, and I don't know if this is true or not, but my mom told me this story about Lenny, and supposedly he told her this story about he was in uh, Central Park, I guess, or, or some some city park and some guy was giving him a hard time about his long hair and his long nails and and you know just couldn't deal with the whole hippie thing you know Lenny kind of looked like a hippie a little bit and so anyway the guy was giving him a bunch of crap and and uh, asked him what he did and Lenny said well I'm a guitar player and he said well you're a guitar player huh well sit down and play guitar for me so uh, I guess Lenny sat and played Ave Maria for him and the guy started crying and said you know Sorry, I, <laughs> you can wow. have all the long hair you want. You can do it. Yeah. That was absolutely beautiful, you know, and, yeah. and I believe it. I believe that yeah. that's something yeah. that that happened, you know. Yeah. That was Lenny for sure, you know, just for sure. He was so easy to get along with, and I'd take him down to the local music store, and guitar players would stop in, and, hey, Lenny, how do you do that? Oh, you know, just like this, you know, and he was very sharing and, and uh, 
so generous with his talent. He really was. Yeah. Yeah. He used to teach private lessons when he would come here and stay, which is several times. And, you know, he'd stay for two weeks. Um, and I'd get him some lessons because he needed money. So I'd, you know, get some of our more advanced students in there for a lesson with him. And uh, they'd go in and he didn't hear much. And then three hours later, they yeah. come out of this lesson. <laughs> And the guy, the, the student, you know, they're advanced students, so they could they could pick it up, but they were just so overwhelmed, you know. And, and uh, one, you know, this one kid who took lessons, Mark Sproul, uh, Lenny, he could read music, but not very well. I mean, that's not yeah. really his forte. Right. Right? Yeah. Well, they got to going in that lesson, and I said, "Well, how the how the lesson go, Mark? After after it's over?" And he says, "Well, I taught Lenny how to read music." <laughs> yeah. I can see Lenny asking. Yeah. And Mark knew him playing classical guitar, so they got somehow they got it in their their their, their they reversed the roles and uh, this guy spent two hours teaching Lenny how to how to read music. I got a, <laughs> and I got a funny I got a funny story like that too where a friend, good friend of mine that took lessons from Lenny and it was the first lesson and and they sat there for whatever time it was and and then uh, my buddy Brad says, so what do I owe you? And Lenny says, how much you got? <laughs> I, said, I, got I got $30. He says, yeah, it'll be $30. You know, so, <laughs> oh, that's Lenny, you know. But, uh, you know, we were, we were talking earlier, right? We were yeah. Before we went on the air, we were talking earlier, and John was talking about how Lenny used to sing what he played. You should, you should talk about that a little bit, John. You know, that's, that's well, for instance, uh, when you hear him play some of those licks, he could actually sing that stuff. And you, like we think of George Benson doing that, you know. But and every now and then, too, I would hear him sing away from the guitar, and it sounded just like his guitar playing. Mm -hmm. Which is to say, what he was playing was already in his imagination. Yeah. No matter how yeah. strange the harmonies were or anything. So, you know, I tell people all the time, don't just play this. Sing this seventh short night. Until you know in your head what, what their fingers are doing, you know, as a way... And as he got to where after a while, he could just, anything he could sing or, or imagine, his fingers, you know, would find it. Right. That's, well, that's yeah. pretty amazing. Pretty amazing, huh? Yeah. yeah. Let's play a little bit of that, what he did on the seventh string here. We'll okay, this is on Kirk's this. guitar. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, on Kirk's instrument. <laughs>
the eyebrow. Well, yeah, he was he, wow. he, he was into it, huh? <laughs> guitar so it almost as you're listening to it you think well this has to be two guitar players somebody's playing way up above the 12th fret you know playing the little belly and somebody's playing in the middle of the deck yeah. and that's the only way you can get the combination of notes but for him it was you know all well put together vertically mm -hmm. in, in one one hand position I'm sorry yeah mm -hmm. he you know, was amazing he was uh, just amazing oh, we we're talking uh, earlier you, about that the uh, just a second M Muriel you know, well, okay yeah hey Muriel <laughs> no, I told you not to call me at work. <laughs> I have called my cell phone, you know, yeah, you go, had yeah. my phone ring so when I, I was on you, stage. Yeah. When we're talking about uh, how generous Lenny was and what it was like to take a lesson from him and how quickly he would find out what you wanted to know and zero in on that, even though he could play the whole universe at a given moment, he would show you exactly what you were asking for. And so... Uh, yeah. the, the, if you'd like to see what that's like, uh, I did a book with him. It's called Fingerstyle Jazz, Lenny Bro Fingerstyle Jazz. And it's on. It's still out there. Mel Bay publishes oh, it. Yeah. Or you might find it, it on, on Amazon. And, and uh, yeah. what I did was, I knew I could never get Lenny to write a book. So what I did is I sat down and took a lesson from him and asked him questions. And so it comes with an audio download of him answering my questions, oh, right? Wow. And then I wrote out what he played. I would say, how do you do a 12-bar blues, da-da-da-da-da-da, and he's, oh, well, you could do, and then, so he just answered the questions. So it, that book is like me taking a lesson or doing an interview yeah. and then writing down what he said, but also you can hear him talk and go through these things and laugh and all this kind of stuff, so it's it's really is like having him over to, to visit yeah. with you. More people learn how to play like many of from that book, I think, than any other thing. It, uh, it no opens up a lot it. of tricks, yeah. It got me good when I listened to London Derriere and saw the changes he was using. You know, I had no idea there were chords yeah. like that. You know, That's like right. what a what a uh, uh, you know, just amazing. Just all the stuff that we've learned from Lenny, and he's still so prominent. That's that's flipped out. And we were talking earlier about one of the things that used to amaze me about Lenny was the way he could play chords behind his melody and still have the melody stand out in front of the chords. Yes. That used to flip me out yeah. that he could had that much control over his hand to not only be doing three different things at bass line chords but still have the melody coming out above that that was just a man that's something you got to work at and i don't think a lot of people realize that and, and he actually he had a way of practicing that too i'm gonna do it without my little finger which he could do but let's see if i can get this on so if i play uh four notes and I, my ring finger is separate now from my other two so these two are working like a team yeah. this guy is working on his own so it's like a bass and a rhythm guitar player and a singer. So you can do, let's see, I'm going to put my headphones on so I can hear myself here. That's my thumb and two fingers. Here's my ring finger. So you practice making that finger be strong and have, by having these two kind of tied together, they, they'll do a little, they'll stay softer. This finger's kind of hard to make it do something. Little finger, who knows? I mean, I never tried to do that. <laughs> you're doing, you're doing Same problem stroke. I got. I'm, so I'm doing a melody with my ring finger. Rest stroke? No, just a good old free stroke. Rest, okay. Yeah. Classical player would do, do that, but if you do a rest stroke with your ring finger, it throws these other two off mm -hmm. to be, they're kind of trying to go chum, chum, chum. Right. And ring fingers, da 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 da. You know, well, and yeah, you know what, you're, what, you're, what you're not talking about though is that independence, man. That's that's scary stuff. Oh, I had right to work there. on it. You know, doing do, quarter would, notes with your melody and and yeah. comp and you know whatever. That's he made too up cool. little exercises like they do. He's letting go of the others but hanging on with with pinky. 
just so that part of it is like what you hang on to. The thing that about the guitar is it's the notes are always gone, you know. But the last note you let go of is the one the listener remembers. So if you want the melody to stick in there, if you let go of the melody note last, so here you are with this chord, but you let go of that finger last. Another chord, you would let go of that one last. Mm -hmm. So you have to practice not just letting go like a rhythm player, but letting go like that, like a like a spider, you know. So. Well, John, you used that technique when you wrote the song for Lenny, didn't you? <clears throat> yeah, I, there's a tune I wrote. He was, had been gone about a year, and I was just missing him. And I, I wrote down some words. Uh, lately, I've been feeling lonely. Lately, I've been feeling blue. Yeah. Uh, lately, I've been feeling lonely. Lately, I've been missing you. So if you could sing those to this, you know. Lately, I'm not going to sing it because it's terrible enough without the head. <laughs> okay. uh, are you up to playing it for us? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play. I'll play it. Uh, Yes. Very if nice. Like to, if you'd like to learn to play that, yeah, I think I've got a True Fire course out there that has that one in it. I think it's also in my fingerstyle quarterly. But and I also gave Muriel the music and the tag. We can figure out how to yes, distribute I, that. Uh, right after this uh, broadcast is over, I'm going to post it free on my website. So if, yeah, you, go you, go. To, if you go to MurielAnderson.com and then click on sh uh, music sheet music, <clears throat> it'll be the it'll be right on top, and you can just download it for free. So give me. Give me about uh, five minutes after the after this broadcast, and it should, it should be up then. And also, John's uh, finger cell um, buffet course is yes. linked right there underneath the description. Yeah. So it would make us all happy if you went ahead and registered for that, and then you could, you know, check out all these tunes. Yeah, yeah. you know, the, the thing that was fun for me meeting Lenny is uh, when I kind of decided to be a guitar player, I thought I was going to be a teacher. You know, and I kept practicing and got a little better than I meant to, so that I ended up with some interesting people to work with. So I knew enough that I could work with Lenny and Chet and people like that. And being around Lenny, I just felt like my guitar world just exploded leaps and bounds. Yeah. You know, so anything I can do to share what I learned is uh, is important to me. You know, so. Well, we got a lot of nice comments here. Uh, uh, Chris says she loves that piece, John, and Bob says, you know, it just fills my heart and it was. Uh, uh, how lucky we were to know him for the time that we did. Yes. And, uh, yeah, That's Lee for says, sure. Uh, Liz says, uh, yeah, it was like he had a piano underneath his fingers. So I'll, uh, yeah, maybe when uh, we play the next tune, I'll go and, and uh, you know, respond to some more of your comments. So really, really nice things coming in here. Uh, you know, the so, other thing that and you're seeing some people who knew Lenny, it's little by little, those of us who knew Lenny, because he moved around so much, every now and then I'll meet somebody who knew him. And so any, anytime that happens, it's like, oh, 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 did that, you know. So I guess I've met a dozen or so people who really were around him enough that they saw uh, an aspect of Lenny that I didn't necessarily see that often. So it's really fun to meet other people who hung out with him. 
Yeah. Well, uh, Denny, would you like to play something, or what? What did you ha uh, have in mind, or maybe? Well, um, I, I, you know, I didn't have anything in mind to be honest with you. We were going to do that freight train thing at the end, but uh, uh, well, let's do it now. You well, want to do it know, now? Yeah. Go ahead. What better time than now? So uh, maybe John would uh, put in some fills or something. Yeah, well, you, you tell me when we go and... You, you go and I'll, I'll follow you, yeah. Okay. All right, you just let me know when you're ready. Who knows? <laughs> we'll see. You ready? Here we go. Yeah. One, <laughs> two... Oh, 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 hold on a second. <laughs> Here we go. One, one, two... Hey, can guitar. I get a copy of that? <laughs> <laughs> it's it's fun what you can do even with the lag uh, of yeah. being. Uh, well, you're in Maine right now. John's in Nashville, and Kirk, Kurt's you're in, in California. California. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Hey, Technology is blowing my mind. Uh, blowing yeah, my mind. Yeah. It really does. It really does. Yeah, we are all in. We're not all in Muriel's living room. That's right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Unfortunately. Yeah. Hey, wouldn't that but be you're fun? You're all huh? welcome here. You're all welcome here. Yeah. <laughs> you know, one thing that I got to thinking about as we were all talking about Lenny and everything is every now and then, because I knew both Lenny and Chet, what I said was knowing Chet was like knowing Thomas Edison. Knowing Lenny was like knowing Vincent Van Gogh. They're, oh, you know, man. They're both at the top of their creative yeah. game, but two different. <clears throat> He talked world. about he always he always talked about like, you know look, looking at Renoir paintings and stuff and yeah. and thinking of music and colors and 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 painting with music and I always thought that was a pretty cool concept you know yeah and, um, he was spiritual in his own way he really was oh and yeah. yeah he loved reading books you know Zen books and and uh, Spinoza and he always had a, a very uh, eclectic taste and another thing I loved about Lenny was. He loved all the same stuff I did, you know. Back in the <laughs> '70s, he he loved James Taylor, he loved Simon and Garfunkel, you know. He loved all of those people. I mean, we used to sit around the house and just put a James Taylor record on, and and he would just talk about how how wonderful that was, and and listen to those guys. Those are the best guys in in L.A. and and uh, I remember one time he he taught me about being humble too. One time we. We went to the uh, Ramada Inn where I used to play quite a bit in uh, Lewiston, Maine. And uh, there was a band on stage and I said, boy, Lenny, that, that guitar player really sucks, doesn't he? And Lenny said, well, he's got a good tone. So he found, he found something good to say. And, and I, I, I learned from that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, keep your mouth shut, Denny bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I don't think anyway. I ever ever heard Lenny say anything negative about any other guitar player or That's right, yeah. Never. No, I never did either. Never no. did either. No. Kirk, you he did was... have a yeah, go ahead. Yeah, you have a question here from, from George who said that you have a, a picture in your shop uh, yeah. of uh, of Lenny playing a double neck guitar. And do you yes. know about that? 
Yeah, I do. Uh, Lenny, we were, we were going to expand this even further. And Lenny had this idea of a double deck guitar on on one neck would be his regular A, a high string guitar. <clears throat> on the other neck was going to be uh, have the, uh, the stringed in the courses in two octave higher, like a 12 string, a one octave string right next to each other. But he wanted the strings far enough apart so he could, with his fingernail or his thumb nail or thumb pick, pick just the the uh, the high string, not the you know like a twelve string. You don't you don't individually pick them side. You know the, you play both of them at the same time. Now he wanted to go even further, take it further than that. That way he could get harmonics that go you know like four octaves, five octaves. Because he he he'd play the 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 whole low note, and then on the way back he'd play. <laughs> And we're, and uh, we had we had it all written out. We had it in a, um, when he passed. We it was really pretty much ready to start. Um, it also had some um, uh, some sympathetic strings like you have on your harp guitar, Muriel. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. It had those too. Yeah. When it didn't, it had everything you ever want on a guitar. You know, it was like a, this mega guitar. So we had a template, a cardboard template of it, and it had it all it was all drawn out. And I think that's the that's the picture that um, George is talking about. But unfortunately, we never got to finish it. Um, oh, okay. You know, I still have it though. So, yeah. But I remember he would do some crazy things, like on freight train. You know, when, when you were just playing, uh, he would uh, go into like uh, three, two against three, and three against four. So he. Oh, let me tune standard here. Uh, so he'd like to do a two against three. And three against four. <laughs> and then it, yeah, it was just, uh, you know, crazy polyrhythms that he would he'd throw into that. It was so funny. You know, he told me that what he did was he went and got a... a a book that drummers learned how to do stuff where you do one thing with your hand and another one with your foot and he would try and do those things with his thumb and his fingers yeah. like a uh, just a dee 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 kind of a thing he would do that and then do keep time with his thumb and just do drum exercises so it gave him rhythmic independence you know in his fingers which really yeah. he does one, that. Yeah, right. one of the things about when you're trying to play uh, like a sound like a band and a singer the singer is rhythmically not attached to the band, the singer can float. Right. So the more you have independence, the more you'll get that that melody part to yeah. sound like singing. Yeah. Yeah. He did yeah. that to Freight Train on that video, you know, that you had, the one that starts off with Stella yeah. Western, right? Yeah. Uh, it's really, it's kind of makes you dizzy. Uh, it's it kind of goes <laughs> off, uh, yeah. and a whole lot yeah. of got vertigo here. Uh, yeah, he, uh, he, uh, I was telling Muriel earlier when we were talking this afternoon about doing this thing, how, uh, there's a friend of mine up here in Maine, his name is Brad Terry, and he's an incredible uh, clarinet player. Uh, and, uh, uh, Lenny, uh, Brad used to say, you know what, Denny, your brother makes my ears bleed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I always thought that was the nicest thing you could say about Lenny. You know, he just. He could take a tune and turn it five different ways and then turn it into flamenco and then into the classical and back into jazz and just take you on a journey that was yeah, seamless. Yeah, yeah. Seamless. It was yeah. awesome. You forgot what tune he started with. Well, you know, know, I, I, I think, you know, Muriel, Muriel was talking about some of the things that he does. That was so, I think Lenny got so far out a, a few times that he... He had to rein himself back in, you know. Oh, yeah. But that's how no, he I, learned, you know. That's how he learned. He pushed the limits, huh? Yeah. I saw him one time, he was playing somewhere, and uh, he stopped in the middle of a tune and just put the guitar down and walked over and ordered a cup of coffee at the bar. And I went over and I said, man, are you okay? He said, had to quit, man. I was about to disappear. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Wow, man. I, I think he was that That's a good He may have one. left the planet, you know. <laughs> Yeah, he uh, he uh, he. Dealt, I remember one one New Year's Eve we played in Topsom, Maine, and he actually fell asleep while he was playing. Just fell asleep. He was playing, you know, and it, and he just kept kind of going down like that and getting softer and softer, and finally it just stopped. And I went up and I said, Lenny, and he goes, what? And I said, you're sleeping. He said, no, I'm not. I'm playing. Yeah. <laughs> okay, all right. Uh, that was a rest there. Yeah, I, 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 I 
just checked out for a little bit, you know, to so get it get it back together. And and then okay, I saw another, him, another, uh, you know, another, saw him oh, give yeah, hell yeah. to the audience big time too. One time, he wow, that's they right. weren't listening, and boy, he he just wasn't gonna have it. And he gave them what for it was like a a softball team, and they were all. <laughs> <laughs> he let them have it, and they quieted right down. They yeah, did, yeah. You know? So he was yeah. he was playing at a club here in Nashville, and um, you know how it is when you play at a club, you'll play Yellow Rose of Texas, and as soon as you do, somebody will come up and say, "Hey, man, do you guys know Yellow Rose of Texas?" Yeah, you know, of course. That's right. <laughs> so they did. He played My Funny Valentine all over the place, and about a tune later, a guy came up and says, "Can you play My Funny Valentine?" And then he says. Can you hum a few bar- bars? Yeah. <laughs> so he made the guy sing it. <laughs> he wasn't gonna let it go. I'll show you. He yeah. said, "I think I." And then he played it again in another key, you know. So for those of us uh, who are watching, you know, <laughs> yeah, we all get we all get that stuff. That's for sure. And people come up, hey, you know, rolling on a river. <laughs> that's, <right. laughs> you know, that's not even the right title, dude. You know. Yeah. Anyway, I'm yeah, just, you're a human yeah. jukebox a lot of the time, yeah. but uh, that's just the, the nature of the beast uh, right. for what I do, you know. But yeah. Then I get to do fun things like this. This yeah. is awesome. This yeah. is awesome. Thank yeah. you so and, much uh, again. Sean Mencher is saying hello. Uh, so yeah, I, I texted Sean to make sure he knew. Yeah, great a mutual I texted friend him. of ours in Maine. Yes, yeah, he's a great, great little like guitar player. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. We did some. We did a gig together, the three of us. Yeah. Well, why don't you play something, Muriel? Well, Lenny is best known for the, those harmonic techniques, where he'd do a harmonic uh-huh. and then a a regular note. So I do a harmonic with a thumb and index finger and then pluck a regular note and then intertwine them. And uh, I learned that from Chet. And then, you know, he told me that he and Lenny were going back and forth teaching each other things and and expanding upon this technique. Um, And so then I thought, well, why not do one harmonic and two notes to kind of spread it out? Because I was I was writing a piece for guitar and orchestra, and I wanted kind of a more spread out harmonic thing, like this. And then uh, I kind of liked the tune, but I didn't have an orchestra to play with. So then I figured, well, I guess I could play the melody by doing a little rest stroke here with, with my ring finger and keep keeping the Lenny technique going. makes me mad about you guys you wow. never make a mistake yeah. <laughs> you know, how do you do that you know god i get in front of the camera and i just go oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. anyway no, no, that was beautiful the trick is don't make a face when you make a mistake <laughs> <laughs> there you go that's a good point you know or just or just acknowledge you did it and laugh about it and yeah everybody's one, okay with one, it, yeah. you know yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. Or so you anyway. can also just play it over and over and over again until it sounds right. You know, until yeah. it sounds right. Follow <laughs> jazz or whatever. Yeah. Actually, the little yeah. jazz. Yeah. 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 I'll tell you a story you that, Chet, that Chet told me when he was when Lenny was doing that first album, I think, and Chet was trying to put Lenny at ease, so he went out in the studio and sat down because Lenny had been playing for him, and he realized he was making Lenny nervous, you know. So he said, Lenny, am I making you nervous? And Lenny's answer was, well, man, it's an experience. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. I'm Not sure yes Chet, no. Chet felt the same way, right? Chet felt, I'm sure Chet felt the same way. Yeah, Lenny was definitely an intimidating guitar player when you sat. If you if you thought you were any good and you went to see Lenny, you came out of there with your tail between your legs. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> yeah. Oh, gosh. Oh, I'll tell you another funny story. I... Uh, was in Nashville and I was going to play uh, for a wedding and Lenny says, man, I've never played for a wedding. Can you take me? So so I took him to the wedding gig and hit him behind the big flower arrangement, you know. And so I'm playing that music out front. And afterwards he said, man, there sure was a lot of love in that room. And he would just totally heard the emotion. You all have been to weddings where everybody loves yeah. everybody at that moment. And he just really he felt yeah. that, that whole room That's full of, it. man, there sure was a lot of love in that room. Yeah, he's a sensitive guy. He's a, yeah, that's, really? that's for sure. That's for sure, yeah. We have a question for, another question for Kirk from Marty. Uh, okay. I'd say that he has a guitar that's a, a high strung or na in Nashville tuning, and he wants to know, are the, are the strings the same as the skinny strings on a 12 string? I think that's what a Nashville tuning is, is the, the bottom strings are, um, the, the higher octave of the of the uh, of that. So if you your low E, <clears throat> Nashville tuning your low E would be the the the, uh, the high of the, the octave. Is not that correct, John? Isn't that the Nashville tuning? Yeah, that's no, right, yeah. yeah, yeah. This so yeah, it's a it's a neat sound. Like... It really sounds good. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah but it's use... not the, it, Don't be uh, confuse that with the high A tuning like Lenny did. It's uh, yeah. something completely different. Yeah, I remember. Uh, I remember even back in the in the '60s when when uh, I was talking about when I first got to hang with Lenny, and uh, he had a Baldwin amp and he had a Framus 12 string that he took the E and the B string double off, but still had the doubles on the E, A, D, and G. Right. And wow. even then, even then, he was working on just being able to hit the high string instead of both strings. Right. Even then, yeah, he was talking right. about it to me, you yeah. know. And uh, then he'd go one better than that, and if he needed a note in the chord, he'd throw a harmonic in there, you know, on the low E string to fatten up the chord. He just, uh, boy, his imagination was just off the scale. It was well, and it enables you to play that high note if you if you if you have just a high note from the you don't to play a harmonic. It takes two hands. I mean, you you've got to dampen it with with the right hand and play the note but with with the, the high or the low string removed you just play with one hand uh, I mean one one stroke gets you that high note and then you can do other stuff and that's how he he got those chord clusters that, mm -hmm. that were he's so famous for that it almost sounds like a piano yeah. because yes. you know it's, it's he, he, the combinations so you've yeah. got the harmonic and then exactly and then plucking two other notes at the same time so so that you get uh, uh, you know a lot of different uh, sounds and different inversions that you wouldn't otherwise have yeah if you remove the bass note the bass string on that then you can get that yeah. note without without putting putting your finger down in your harmonic uh, on your left hand and then you can play uh, you know more stuff more uh, tight clusters of chords uh, that was what he was going for in that double neck, too, the same thing. Yeah, and uh, I'll answer uh, Ron and uh, Daniel both that what I just played was the second half of Two Shores. Um, that's, uh, and then it is a similar technique to, to what I use for View from Space. And View from mm -hmm. Space is, uh, is using uh, still that uh, one harmonic and two notes on the, on the way up and then one harmonic and one note on the way down, so. So that's the technique for view from space. I've got a, a, a free tutorial on that on my YouTube, so you can uh, uh, can check that out. But that's all, that all comes from Lenny. So I have, you know, Lenny to thank for 
for you know that entire direction. Um, yeah. And uh, you know, I've got maybe four or five tunes that use that technique. Oh yeah, wow, what an influential guitar player. Oh yeah. Yeah. You know, when well, picking up on what Muriel was saying, you know, it's not just doing what he did; it's what it made you think to try because you saw yeah. what he was yeah. doing. Yeah. Made he, you experiment. He, yeah, you joined him on the journey yeah. to go way out there, you know. So. <laughs> yeah, to take, take something yeah. and then bring it someplace else. Yeah. It was funny. I remember way back, way back again when he first came from Canada back then. He had his he had a, uh, a Jose Ramirez uh, uh, flamenco guitar with the wooden wooden pegs and the whole nine yards, and and uh, I was into rock and roll a little bit too and bending strings and stuff and he said like you can try my guitar man but like uh no string bending <laughs> okay. no problem man. you yeah. don't want me to bend any friction, strings on this friction uh, tuners don't like string bending <laughs> yeah. i couldn't I, I can't bend a classical string anyway you can't get a whole tone out of that to save you you know what but anyway well, yeah let's play another clip from from lenny here. oh good yeah. and uh you can make some some comments over it, and I'll go and check and see uh, uh, some some of the comments that are coming in here. We've got a, got a lot of them, so so here's a little bit of Lenny uh, playing a Bach piece and then taking it elsewhere, just like we were talking about. Specifically, nobody's even begun to address that, and probably they won't. It's just too—it's too hard on one hand, but it's too personal in a way. It's sort of—it's sort of his voice, the, what he did with those harmonic things. Anybody can do that a, a little bit. The thing with him is that he could do it sort of for days at will. Like everybody else, when I got to know Lenny a little bit, I mean, the first thing I did was say, well, how do you do that thing with the harmonics? Yeah. So this Holy came from God. that documentary. Uh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Man. Sure took that out, didn't he? Using you know, his little <laughs> finger to play, you know, you know, he's got tremolo, but then his, his little finger, he used all the time for the melodies. So it's, it's hard to do. Yeah. I think he used his little finger for uh, for his harmonics too. Oh yes, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. 
You know, I, I use my third finger, but he always, you know, and he had that, that, that uh, curve in his finger. finger yeah, he's, just, just he's perfect, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, we have a question from William, um, and this was brought up in the documentary that, that, that was taken off of, is, uh, is what caused uh, Lenny to take drugs? Uh, that, he probably would be famous now if, if not for that. You know, it, uh, it was, um, it, do we want to go in that, uh, I mean, I, I know he's your brother, and Denny, do you feel comfortable at all talking about that, or you want to? Oh, sure, sure, no, no, no. I, you know, I, my personal feeling about Lenny taking drugs and, and this may be, uh, you know, totally off the wall, but my feeling was he felt alone in so many ways with his music was so far <laughs> out there compared to everybody else. I think he had a hard time finding people to talk to, communicate with. And I think that might have sort of fed into the whole, the whole drug thing, you know, to just kind of... Uh, and then, you know, the whole audience thing where sometimes you're playing in a place where nobody's really listening you know and you're, you're you're pouring your heart out and and i think all of those kinds of things uh probably uh contributed to, to lenny taking drugs you know i I'd, I'd had somewhat the same sense that there was a to me there was so much in his world you know to make sense of it was almost impossible it's it, and I, the rest of us aren't grappling with that much stuff like trying to make the universe make sense all the time you know and so it was a it was tough to be him, you know. Yeah, yeah, it was, and and uh, you know he definitely uh, definitely had a hard time staying away. That's for sure. And uh, boy, once it gets you, it's got you. I think you know. And but you know, it's amazing as as uh, you know as much as that was a part of his life, what he managed to accomplish in spite oh. of yeah, that's amazing. is mind blowing, just mind blowing. And, you know, really, you look at all the geniuses and, you know, everybody from Van Gogh to Charlie Parker to, you know, they all, they were all, you know, doing some kind of drugs, I think, you know, well, heroin or whatever. And Chet said that he was staying at their house for a while, but then he would uh, just take uh, his wife's uh, medicine that was in the cabinet, uh, take a whole fistful of it just to see what it would do. <laughs> and, you know, well, yeah, so, yeah, he yeah. He experimented with drugs. He, he experimented. Yeah. <laughs> I remember one time he, he ate a whole bottle of my aunt's diuretics. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so you can imagine the outcome, yeah. you know. Uh, boy, oh boy, yeah, yeah. That's uh, yeah. That's you know. The, that's a sorrowful side of Lenny. But you know, we. I think everybody loved Lenny so much for what he brought to the game and brought to music and to life in general that we just kind of overlooked it and yeah. tried to help him when we could, but understood when we couldn't, you know. Yeah, everybody, did the, you know, he, he disappointed us several times on different occasions uh, during the NAMM show time or, or not during that time. And, and you'd get really mad at him, you know, for, for doing this, not showing up or or being too drunk to play or something. But then as soon as he sat down and played the guitar, you just immediately forgave him. And it was uh, off to the races again. You know? Well, yeah. I, should, I should try that that trick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Trust me, you don't want to do that, Nero. You don't want to do that. You've got no. a good thing going. Don't bad day. Uh, you don't uh, need that. Yeah. yeah. I remember Chet said one time that uh, Lenny asked him, hey, you know, can I, uh, do you have $10 I could, I could have? And, and Chet said, what happened to the $10 I gave you yesterday? He said, well, I needed to get my shoes shined. And the only way I'd, place I knew to do that was at the bus station. So I took a cab to the bus station. <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah, he was a yeah. character. As soon That's as he got guy. money, he couldn't hold on to money at all. And he just couldn't. But he was at, at down to the bar or, or raising yeah. hell somewhere. Yeah, yeah he, uh, he was a tough guy to nail down for yeah. sure. But what, like I said, what he gave the world and is still giving the world, yeah. Yeah, we all forgive yeah. him. We yeah. all forgive him. I, I we always, love him. Yeah. I always did. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So anyway. Well, let me play a, a little bit. There was a, some of this uh, this tremolo that uh, that he played uh, mm -hmm. in, in this section. Uh, <laughs> Video where Lenny's playing 
freight train later in there? It's the same guitar, same clothes, same everything. Gotta be. I think that's uh, a, a different, uh, that particular one doesn't go much past that. So. Yeah. Yeah. But Chet makes it look easy. Yeah, uh, that's right. Lynn is, sure is saying, uh, we have a little comment, nice, nice comment from Lynn, who's uh, thanking Lenny and thanking all of us for uh, kind of giving a, a window to all the different things that the guitar can do for those who are, you know, happy to awesome. play campfire chords. So. <laughs> Some awesome. So uh, very nice. Well, we should uh, probably uh, uh, go have dinner at some point. Uh, That's right. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I That's haven't great. eaten yet. It's eight o'clock yeah. in Maine. I'm I'm ready to chow. <laughs> uh, well, it's just been so great talking with all of you. Um, I don't know what we could finish off with. Um, uh, any any Whoa. thoughts? <laughs> John, is there, is there anything you might want, want to finish with, or, or Danny? I, I'll tell you one, one thing I will tell you, because I remember you know, how when we lost him, uh, Chet's wife called and said, you know, Chester asked me to call you. He just couldn't come to the phone. Mm -hmm. And I sat down on the couch, and I remembered uh, a lesson that Lenny had given when he said, this is how the chords work. And just kind of played all the thirds up like that, you know. And so I wrote a tune for him. But using that, that idea of just spelling the chord out like that. Uh, and I just sat down and wrote it right after I got the phone call, you know. Uh, I didn't finish it, but I just thought, I don't want everybody to forget what Lenny showed me, what, the, the feeling I had, you know. Uh, I just knew it was a... A serious loss, and from here forward, it was up to the rest of us to pass it on. You know. Hurt my oh, mom the worst. Forever, you know, yeah. Hurt oh, my yeah. mom the worst, but she she took it hard. Yeah. Yeah, she really did. She took it hard, you know. And uh, it's too bad we could never, never get him home. You know, we wanted to exhume his body and bring it back to, to Maine, and just couldn't seem to make that happen. And, and poor mom passed before that ever. Yeah. That was one of her wishes, but never came to fruition. But anyway, um, Lenny, we love you. We miss you. Uh, I, I know it. Lenny, bro, the best. The best. <laughs> oh, man. Is, is he he's still here, Rose? Um, yes. 
It's so yes. a place, yeah. Yeah. Years ago, I went by there a couple times. It was hard to find, but uh, yeah, it's a, just a little plaque. Right, 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 right. Yeah. yeah. Such a great man. Yeah. Well, there's a couple of uh, documentaries out on him now that, uh, you know, just a, just very interesting, very well done too. Yeah. So did we figure out something to go out on? Or? Uh, well, no, I, could, I could do that view from space since that was inspired by him. And it's, it's, yeah. it's, uh, it's very spacey. And if you find something to, to throw in there, it's, I've never done it in ensemble before. So it might be interesting <laughs> to see what could fit in. So let me make sure that I'm, I'm in uh, some semblance of normal tuning here. It'll take about a half an hour to tune all those. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Go get it. Go get it. Right. Don't worry. Only, Thank no, only 19 more to go. Yeah. Thank God for tuners, huh? Yeah. So it's 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 in it's in D. So we'll just see what happens, and uh, this is this is for for Lenny and for everyone who was inspired by him. View from space.
Oh, that was really cool. Man. Awesome. Oh, oh awesome. man. Yeah, that was fun. <laughs> that was fun. Well, well titled, too. View from space. Right. That's very appropriate. Well, Beautiful. Here, here's a reminder. Uh, I'm going to post John's version of Lately. Uh, so go to MurielAnderson.com. Click on Sheet Music up on the top. Uh, in about five minutes, it should be up there, and we'll just give that away. And so thank you, John, for that gift. You got it. I everyone. want people to learn to play it. I want to hear it when I get out there. Yes, and we've got your uh, True Fire uh, channel posted uh, right underneath the link there too as well. Yeah, I'm doing a lot of stuff about different heroes I had a chance to work with. There's a lot of Lenny, Lenny yeah. lessons in there. So. Oh, great, great. Well, thank you, Kirk, for for You're joining welcome. us and giving giving us that insight and I and really Benny. Great to meet you. So, great to meet you too, Dennis. Danny. Nice. Sorry. Dennis is fine. Hey, okay. friends, call me Dennis. Yeah. We're all set. I'll call, I'll call you Denny. Call me Denny. Call yeah. me Dennis. Call me anything you want. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want it to sound like your mother's calling you and she's mad at you. Dennis! <laughs> yeah, she did too. She used to chase me around with a broom. Yeah. Break it over my head and we'd all laugh about it. She'd get yeah. so mad. We'd just be laughing. She'd be banging yeah. on us and... Finally, she'd start laughing too, you know. <laughs> oh man! That's good anyway, we gave her horror. Lenny and I running around at night. We gave her horror stories. I you know, next time we'll talk about it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay, that'll that'll be the sequel. Yeah. All right. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Thanks for joining us. What a nice way to spend my Monday evening. Bye. Me too. Thank all you. Right. Thanks.